नमस्ते सो दिस सीरीज ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शंस ऑन डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द योगा ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन सो टुडे आई थॉट वी शुड रिफ्लेक्ट अपॉन ए वर्ड व्हिच इज यूज्ड इन शुरबिंदोज योगा एंड दैट इज परफेक्शन नाउ परफेक्शन ऑफ कोर्स वी ऑल थिंक परफेक्शन मींस डूइंग समथिंग वेरी वेल आउटवर्डली दैट्स ए वेरी वन एस्पेक्ट वेरी स्मॉल एस्पेक्ट एक्चुअली that is skill meticulousness but perfection in a spiritual sense means something else and to understand that word we can start with a very simple observation that we all can make if we ask is this world perfect the answer will be obvious i don't even have to say what the answer is <laughs> it is not perfect unless one is totally blind and even a blind person will say it is not perfect do we want this world to be perfect answer will be obvious yes we want it perfect isn't it so there is a gap between what what this world is at present and between what we aspire it to be now when we say that we as want it to be perfect we don't know what it means but everybody see spontaneously do you want the world to be perfect yes now if we go into the nitty gritty what do you mean by perfection perfect world then somebody will say government should run like this my house should run like this i should have money i should have comfort i should have you know all my relationship should be always happy with me all these things no success fame name now idea of perfection is very ignorant and limited but it starts like that now why we use the word limited because it will introduce an element of progress within it because when we have achieved it we realize this is not it and let's take an example so the first thing about perfection we must understand is it not say static state it's a evolving state you can't go from this is life of illusion to a life of full knowledge you have to go through steps take for example a child in kindergarten what is the perfect thing for a child a mom who gives candies a teacher who gives good marks and a papa who satisfied everything that you know you want isn't it but when the child goes to standard 8 then those marks of kindergarten become less important but something else isn't it you want to study further and father gives tells ki i will give you everything but don't study further there are parents who do that no they in ancient times or not ancient times in india some time back it used to be that women will not get much educated why because she should get married married in a good family very rich family what ha- used to happen was she happy not happy why because she has another dream now which is awakened but if you go back two generations back was a woman happy if she was married in a rich uh, good family with a good husband she may have been because this was the conception of perfection or the idea of a woman's perfect life when she had accepted it similarly you want to study so for a child who is studying in 8th standard what is it that the child is striving for which exam is next higher secondary or whatever if you ask what do you want to do afterwards the child will say i'll think about it so idea of perfection is getting 99% in this when you have got are you happy oh now i can sit and rest you say no 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 actually i want to go into medicine then you go into medicine are you happy no you want to do further specialize when you have specialized are you happy no you want to become very good in whatever you have done when you have become very good in what you have done will you be happy no because you discover there is so much you don't know so you want to expand your knowledge and when you have all the knowledge that is accessible provided you have not grown senile by then then you ask are you happy no there are many things i still want to know meaning there by f- f- truly speaking unless somebody is you know that bourgeois ideal that i'll be once i get my job and you know 
I'll be happy with the money that I get, that kind of idea. But otherwise, there is a perfection, the thirst for perfection, and it goes from step to step. Now, some people will interpret this whole analogy by saying that means you must abandon all this. That is an illusionist point of view. You have to go through this step by step till you reach a point. A point will come. It may come while doing your medical uh, MBBS degree. It may come while doing an engineering degree. It may come much earlier. It may come in while you are in class 12th. Suddenly you may get the idea that whatever we have within the human range cannot satisfy me. I seek for something more. Isn't it? And it applies to everything. So you take a next level. Meaning that why you want to break free from the human circle, magic circle within which you can arrive at a certain degree of perfection to another level where you want everything perfect beyond the human, human knowledge, let us say. Is human knowledge infallible? No, anybody, even the highest scientist will say, no, it is not infallible. We cannot predict an event with certainty. The sign of infallibility is prediction of an event with certainty. You cannot predict. Now you have all these cephalogists and scientists, everybody saying, when will corona go? Nobody <laughs> seems to know. They are pushing the lines, you know. Ask astrologers. Sometime back they were saying all that in March or April it will go away. Then came May, then came July. Now they are playing safe. They'll say it will last for a long time. Safer thing. <laughs> so, any science, it's not only about astrology, it's about even any science. The Prediction, potential. You may say with a reasoned guess, you may say probability is very high because you don't know the future. So knowledge remains in always which is fallibility subject to error. Then take the next level. This is about the mind, the heart, heart's thirst for love. You have met somebody who is Mr. Perfect, Prince Charming. You marry the person. Ah, my life will be happy hereafter. If you are lucky and God's grace is there, it will not be happy. Okay, <laughs> if God has forgotten you, it will be happy or you will live the illusion of happiness. There are people who say, how does it matter what my husband is doing? He gives me my, his credit card, partly is with me, rest I don't care. Now, that is not happiness, but a relationship, that love. So you have, it's not that people are bad. It's just that you know it is not perfect. There is something greater you are wanting. Sometimes one doesn't even know what it means. You may make a lift, list, perfect understanding, perfect this, perfect that, but it's not that. It is something else which we don't know what that... I'll give you the essence of... Take for example, if you ask within the human limit, what is a perfect love? Perfect understanding, perfect care, perfect affection, never angry, all these things, no? But this is a negative way of looking at it. What is perfect love? Where there is a constant flow of sweetness and joy of relationship. You can't get it. Just one may be very understanding, yet you may not get it. Why? For some vague reason. Because it doesn't exist within this domain. There can be understanding. But you cannot have that which is missing. The, the, the love brings these three things. Beatitude, joy, and sweetness. These are the three aspects of love. It will be missing because within this range it's not found. Other things you may find. Care you will find, affection you will find, all this can be there. But this missing. Then you take the vital. It wants power. It wants joy. So within the human range you can find things. But beyond a point, no. Then you think about the body or the physical life of man. And bodily health through various means you can find a balance but beyond a point, no. So there is a, now this is, so second aspect of perfection is, uh, first aspect is a progressive thing. After you have reached one point, you realize there is greater, greater, greater. So perfection is not a static state. Even in the divine realms, it is a progressive perfection. So you have to move through steps. Second aspect of perfection is, it is not just the absoluteness of one aspect. Normally we think perfect love. But can there be perfect love without perfect wisdom? Can there be perfect wisdom without perfect joy? Sometimes people say, no, oh, he is sage-like, very wise. Very wise, very boring. Why? Right? Because one aspect is developed to a point. But the joy of life is not there. Sages arrive at sagehood by controlling their 
emotions controlling their feelings by controlling their joy of life in that's how so perfection second thing about perfection is not the absoluteness of one quality but the harmony of all the virtues you see you have one little plant of rose blooming with many colors and you have a garden of rose and you have a garden where you have variety of flowers and the variety of flowers arranged in such a beautiful pattern without your you know beyond our understanding i don't know how many of us have noticed it just take a look in this park which you take a chakkar no you will see some of the trees which are so strange or you go to the botanical garden they all come up like that it's not man made so man made is of course the which tree you will plant but similarly in the wilds why does it carry that charm and wonder because of the variety of things in such a wonderful ecosystem they are there so this is the second aspect of perfection where you have a totality it is not one aspect or another aspect that's how divine perfection is divine is not only wise divine is also all love divine is not only all love he is all power you know if he uh, if his smile is bewitching his hand ready to smite can be threatening to the whole world that's why you see in you know vishnu bhagwan all the four hands on one side there is abhay mudra and lotus kastub mani lakshmi ji by the side and then there is gada and sudarshan chakra also okay don't forget that <laughs> so there are different aspects which are harmonized so second thing about perfection is it's a totality it's not about one element reaching its peak that makes it even more difficult because while it's easy to develop one aspect of nature but totality will be missing and the third aspect of perfection is can you have an individual perfection ignorant of the whole world how will you enjoy it you'll be a now you may not be a boring person but you will become bored of the world around because what you will say will never be understood that was used to happen with mystics so some of them became recluses because the way they were experiencing life the way they understood life the way they you know felt life nobody else could share that so when you don't share that as savitri says very beautifully in savitri imperfect is the joy not shared by all so perfection has a third aspect which is a collective dimension so you have individual perfection which is can be within human limits in human limits you can have a sattvic perfection good human being you know he is a ethical person he lives according to what is called as ignorantly called as dharma but actually it is only a sattvic kind of nature he will not steal he will be honest he will file all his taxes correctly isn't it he will know this is my wife this is my child this is my teacher everybody in their right places this is sattvic perfection he'll be also you know a successful man by worldly standard but this is a limit it it is not what we are meant for there is something much greater it is a finite perfection within the boundaries of nature beyond the finite perfection there is infinite so after a point you want to break free into the infinite generally it is very difficult for sattvic people to break into the infinite they are too satisfied with themselves with their knowledge with the world and they can't conceive of something greater even if they conceive they find it very difficult to break because they are too happy and satisfied oh we have to leave this yes you have to leave there is no other choice if you want to go to something higher then you come back and make it also more perfect but initially the transition is there from the finite to the infinite so this is the second aspect of perfection that one is its progressive second is all these aspects are together and the third is it has to be collective again in sattvic societies is the highest that man can conceive rational society just society fair society you know what people nowadays talk about ram rajya and there are big lectures on ram rajya can you have ram rajya unless human nature is changed you cannot by its very nature you may have nice words scriptures very good but till human nature remains like wali and sugriv you can't have ram rajya that's what sri aurobindo says so the true perfection that we want individually collectively and in totality can only come by the touch of that which is perfect so in search of that perfection human beings went inside and they discovered perfect state 
they started living in a state of peace bliss self existent love which was not prone to anything which lower nature you will find a knowledge which was spontaneous intuitive they started experiencing all that they said this is wonderful but how to enter into this the world no that the moment they enter you will experience that you are completely solid because world is like that now shurbindo first time says not only you can realize it within you can bring it into our everyday life this is a very very difficult task just understand especially in in a society world which does not want it what is our relation with the divine divine should give whatever i want so first relation with divine is that but the day divine says okay it is enough let me change the rules of the game i am going to deny you what you want sir please sir so he'll say but i'll give you what i want to give you now what is required there is complete trust now that trust means that now divine will will start expressing in your life and no more the individual human will so this transition is a very difficult the world does not want that is what we see in savitri when ashupati reaches to the divine mother what does the divine mother tell him first she says alone thou standest at the eternal doors what thou hast one is thine but ask no more you want to make this earth the seer vision home but look at man he doesn't want it he is very satisfied with his little knowledge so that's why it's a very difficult task we must understand and then we will see what it really means so the only way it can come about is by bringing the divine into our everyday life divine is in his own home very and he will tell you first stay with me in ananda vaikuntha and if you are lured by that first challenge will be stay in this earth that is all hunky dory imagination second challenge will be when you find it he will say stay with me what is the, why you want to go to earth be with humanity try to change everything then you have to say oh blissful godhead i shun the eternal day even as i have shunned the eternal night oh blissful godhead even the snare of thy charming voice voice cannot turn me away from earth and men that is the big challenge then he will be very happy but you can't do it thinking oh he'll be very happy if i do this <laughs> isn't it so shubhendra speaks of this in uh, synthesis of yoga there is a higher perfection and a lower perfection and there is a question asked by the mother but first we see just something which shubhendra has written the divine life will reject nothing that is capable of divinization all is to be seized exalted made utterly perfect and this word perfect is so interesting no because there are people who don't want to use the word divine and she says you can use the word perfection it's the same thing and there again he says toward the end this is from the supramental manifestation some of his right uh, last writing it is not that the action from the two ends cannot meet which is the higher and the lower and the higher take into itself and uplift the lower perfection mark the words higher has to take into itself not fall into the lower then it won't work it has to seize and take it pull it but this can usually be done only by a transition from the lower to a higher outlook first the change of the way we look at life aspiration and motive and mother says that uh, you know the method is what is given in the vedas is by will and faith this the will is the tapas if we are wanting the lower then you cannot have the higher as simple as that so by changing the aspiration and the motive if the aspiration is lower you cannot have the higher the aspiration has to be persistently for the higher the motive has to change this uh, instead of the egoistic motive but uh, to live for the divine as he puts it this we shall have to do if our aim is to transform the human into the divine life 
But here there comes in the necessity of taking up the activities of human life and sublimating them by the power of the spirit. Here the lower perfection will not disappear, it will remain, but will be enlarged and transformed by the higher perfection which only the power of the spirit can give. So the whole process is given, aspiration must change, the motive must change, the motive cannot be that I want to lead a rich egoistic life of enjoyment and also I will get something of the divine, it won't happen, very simple. We can renounce one for the other. Second is even when the motive changes, what is the way? Through persistent aspiration, you have to bring the divine touch into this life. Then only and then it has to be uplifted and sublimated. So somebody asks the mother, sweet mother, here Sri Aurobindo speaks of the higher perfection and the lower perfection. And beautifully she explains, the higher perfection is the spiritual perfection, integral union with the divine, identification with the divine, freedom from all the limitations of the lower world, all the six enemies which we are talking about. Freedom from lust, anger, greed, fear, jealousy, false attachment, everything, all that, you know, anger. That is spiritual perfection, the perfection that comes from yoga, quite independent of the body and the physical world. So you will realize, you can realize it if you do, but your bodily life will remain the same. The day you want to enter into it, you are back to the mess. It is... A field which is full of unrest and turbulence. Which in ancient times meant first rejecting the body and the physical life so as to have a relation only with the higher world and finally with the divine. That is the higher perfection. Because this field has remained unchanged. Body carries the stamp of trilleniums, not millenniums, of all kinds of forces. Moment you enter it, you have everything else which comes. Spont like free gifts. As you enter the body at the gate, you are given doubt. You still further go <laughs> right to the bottom end where there is despair. All the gifts and say, now you enjoy the bodily life. <laughs> you cannot. So they used to withdraw from that. And the lower perfection. So this is the higher perfection where yogis used to withdraw. And the lower perfection is to be able to make the human being in the present form and in his body, in his relation with all terrestrial things, do the utmost he can. So sometimes you will see strange phenomena. You will find those who are not striving for a higher perfection, but are happy with the human, very nice, good human beings. Whereas <laughs> those who are striving for the higher perfection, suddenly you will see there, everything is chaotic. Why this happens? Because they have lost this and they have not yet fully established that. You will see this. Because if you make human perfection as a motive, it is easy to achieve. Because it is something which has been done. It is within the uh, realm of grasp of humanity. But this will not go very far. This is the case of all great men of genius. Artistic genius, literary genius, genius in organization, the great rulers. Those who have carried physical capacities to their maximum perfection, human development to the limit of its possibility, and for instance, all those who have complete control over their bodies and succeed in doing miraculous things. We know that Russian gymnast when they came and mother said, this is so wonderful, but only if they could combine the higher spiritual outlook and the spiritual consciousness, the result would be wonderful. So you have either this or that. This is the unfortunate part because of the stress of consciousness. As we saw, for example, during the war with the airmen, they made their bodies do things which at first sight seemed quite impossible. They obtained from them an endurance, a skill, a power which were almost unthinkable. And from every point of view, from the point of view of physical strength, of intellectual realization, of the physical qualities of energy and courage, of disinterestedness, goodness, charity, all human qualities carried to their utmost limits. This is the lower perfection. But we cannot conceive what could be beyond it. Charity, disinterestedness, strength, endurance, even a certain degree of sacrifice, all these intellectual knowledge, these are the limits of Human perfection. So what is higher perfection? 
the higher perfection is spiritual and superhuman so right now intellectual knowledge at the human mental level is only is limited to analysis observation reason inference these are the means what is the higher supra intellectual way of knowing through direct inspiration revelation intuition human love is limited to i you and a limited field ego if you hurt my ego finished that's the end of the whole thing but what is divine love divine loves all of us despite us you know that's the only model i know of despite everything that human beings do contrary but he continues to love them so this is another level human power limits so this is into the infinite realm the low perfection is human perfection carried to its maximum limits and this may be quite independent of all spiritual life all spiritual aspiration so this is what people often wonder and ask oh in the western society everything is so perfect order though now it is no more true one virus has disrupted everything <laughs> but they used to be no oh look at what a perfect organization look at india are india from times immemorial has strived striven for a higher perfection unfortunately neglecting the lower in hey days it was also not neglected but you can bring the two but the moment you strive for a higher perfection this is the problem that starts one can be a genius without having any spiritual aspiration one can have all the most extraordinary moral qualities without having any spiritual life at one point even that's why shri ramakrishna says very beautifully he says there is hope for two kinds of human beings who are they he says one is the unlettered peasant who doesn't know anything about anything <laughs> he is open <laughs> he will go to divine and or another who has read all the shastras and knows the limitation of all knowledge here shastra is not just the spiritual scripture but other scripture he knows the limitation he says no this is not enough so he is he goes beyond the word written word and shri rama krishna goes on to say but for the rest the pandits is very difficult pandit will never open to anything higher and greater the infinite revealing in infinite forms at each moment in its own beautiful way because they must go according to the written word whether it be in science or it be spirituality in art they are confined to that music which raga is this people often say which raga is the mother's you know music so when i tell them this is infinite raga so they are very disappointed he says no no alugda it is according to this raga and there are people who have actually made some albums like that based on the raga of mother's music i said mother will be very amused what poetry is this what meter is this are infinite meter why do you want to limit the infinite but it's our human tendency to limit the infinite so this is finite this is infinite so infinite and eternal means at each moment it will be new and fresh infinite means it will manifest in countless ways you can't fix it that oh sometime back somebody said very beautifully shubhendra is quoted at one place and shubhendra says that um, i think it is walt whitman if i am not mistaken so the quote is i contradict myself then he says i carry multitudes <laughs> he was a mystic poet of course he meant in a certain sense i contradict myself i carry multitudes at one place shubhendra says why should the divine be limited to a particular idea you may limit the divine to a particular idea he may not somebody asks the mother that will the divine come to a non believer he says why not he, it, if it suits him why do you want to limit him that he will come only to somebody who is sitting in meditation in a fixed lotus posture for hours on he may not he says if it amuses him he may go to a non believer and say hey you look here i have come to meet you <laughs> and it has happened she gives example saul of tarsius who is persecuting the christians <laughs> and you know when he is in the battlefield all thirsty and suddenly christ appears and says you want some water who are you i am christ but i am persecuting your fellows <laughs> he doesn't christ doesn't say but almost like yeah yeah you are doing the right thing 
<laughs> they're good for nothing fellows i have i have come to reveal to you something so you know from our idea that if we fix divine into fixed religious forms then he will be happy he may be he may feel it's petrified knowledge petrified intellectual knowledge of the past shobindra has used the word whereas when you are like a child with wonder when you don't have the illusion of knowledge he may come he may krishna may come come i'll play with you and in play he will reveal you a whole universe so this is where she is showing the distinction so one may have all the most extraordinary moral qualities without having any spiritual life look at the word qualifier any and even usually those who have a very great power of human realization are satisfied more or less satisfied with their condition because risking the infinite you know it's very nice to watch the sea no from here on the sea shore at most go put your feet go swimming few meters come back and if you are told i'll drop you in the middle of the sea even a good swimmer will say sir <laughs> it will be disorienting unless of course he says but i'll keep a rope hold you from above that day i see you sinking i'll pull just say little call then you will say okay let me enjoy the sea isn't it so the divine is like that but he'll drop you into the middle of the sea and you won't know which way is the right way everywhere there is water you don't know which shore is he will say doesn't matter you go any which way i'll meet you isn't it so that's the idea of a higher perfection so human beings are scared because finite life is scared of infinity it will lose all its orientation you'll become like a baby you are no more that you know i am mr so and so with a card so this is how it will be they feel they are self sufficient that they carry in themselves the source of their realization and their joy and it is usually very difficult to make them understand and feel that they are not the creators of their own creations no in science i have seen in my own field so many articles people love you know how many articles how many talks now in spiritual field there is a new competition how many talks somebody has given it means nothing you may give 10 100000 talks what counts is what you have realized that you can't hide i mean it's not that one has to do either or but i'm just saying that this idea of you know that i am the creator i am the source of things no you are nothing and nobody in fact the more you become nobody and nothing the more the chances are that that greater consciousness will flow most of them with very rare exceptions if they are told you are not the originator of this work you are doing it is a force higher than you and you are only its instrument they would dislike it very much mother has a subtle sense of humor you see what do you mean i have no credit <laughs> excuse me <laughs> there is only one who is doing tomar karma tumi karo ma loke bole kari ami recently i heard a very nice another thing on um, whatsapp university is not all bunkum you take the essence leave the rest so whether the story is factually true or not but it indicates something very nice that once tulsidas saw rahim was a great uh, he was a mystic and a rich man so he would give a lot of daan to people so tulsidas observed that you know he is when he gives his eyes are on the feet of the person to whom he is giving so he made a couplet he says ki your eyes are cast more and more down as you lift your hand more and more up what is the secret why are you doing this he said something very beautiful he said you know what i know that i am not the giver because i have been given by someone else but people keep saying raheem is a big giver so i feel very embarrassed <laughs> so my eyes are down <laughs> they are praising me whereas i am nothing and great beings know it you know bismillah khan his interview that movie had come here also and bismillah khan what does he say people say bismillah khan sanai his folk is this and that he said but what is bismillah khan the real thing is he who made a bismillah khan possible and he can make hundreds like that so this is where that humility is missing and they will send you about your business okay sir theek hai i am not the creator you said no okay okay you go from here 
because they want to be the originator and creator therefore these two perfection are really divergent in ordinary life it was said in the old yoga that the first condition for doing yoga was to be disgusted with life but those who have realized this human perfection are very rarely disgusted with life this is the problem most difficult people to convert unless they have met with personal difficulties which are a grace such as ingratitude of people around them the lack of understanding of their genius which was not sufficiently appreciated so all this disgusts them but otherwise as long as they are in their period of success and creation they are perfectly satisfied so as they are satisfied above all self satisfied they don't need to seek anything else it is not essentially true she says you don't have to be disgusted but this happens because otherwise you don't seek anything higher but this is usually how things happen and unless there is in this genius a soul which is perfectly conscious of itself and has come to accomplish a specific work on earth he may very well be born grow up and die without knowing that there is anything other than this earthly life unless there is a genius in the soul that is a condition arjuna perfect archer but surrender to shri krishna da vinci such a wonderful artist but he knows that the inspiration comes from elsewhere or bismillah khan but most people they are terribly egoistic we had recently just raj dying what a wonderful vocalist he so beautifully turned to krishna we had on the other hand another vocalist of equally great uh, repute i don't want to name a dead person not proper but great musician but all egoistic i am the one so this is the difference between the two only those who are predestined can combine these two perfections and realize something integral but there are some who are perfect within the human limits and also something greater they are a genius of sort in some area or the other or many areas of human life and yet at the same time they are open to something higher this is quite rare these are the ones whom we can say that divine calls many persons many are called few are chosen like arjuna the great spiritual leaders have very rarely been great realizers in the physical world it has happened we have vyasa valmiki shorbindo himself and the mother perfect organizer painter music but usually you don't see the combination again with shorbindo we see the combination of these two perfections only those who are conscious incarnations of the divine shri krishna lord rama naturally carrying themselves the possibility of the two perfections but this is exceptional people who had a spiritual life a great spiritual realization were able at certain exceptional moments to have a capacity for outward realization this also was exceptional but it was intermittent and never had the integrality the totality the perfection of those who concentrated on material realization it's like you know somebody who is a very good poet but not thinks i am the poet another person who is open to the higher realm and also authors and writes and you know expresses poetry and that's why she says and this is why those who live only in the external consciousness for whom the earthly material life is all that really exists concrete and tangible perceptible to all always feel that spiritual life is something hazy something almost mediocre from the material point of view and finally she says and this is precisely the key to the effort shri bindo wanted us to make that is why shri bindo used to repeat and has always said you must work from both hands develop the mind develop the heart strain it to the utmost the life force the body both ends you must work from both ends not let go of one for the other and certainly if you want to have a divine consciousness you must not give up spiritual aspiration but if you want to become an integral divine being on earth take good care not to let go of the other end and make your body the best possible instrument it is a disease of the ordinary human intellect which comes moreover from separation division to make a thing always either this or that later on mother says in the agenda this and that but 
the depravity. Of course, you must understand this is from where the next will come. You can't stand here and say, I want this also the way it is. As Shubindu says, all life is yoga, but for us it must change. We don't want it to continue in the ignorant way. It, it will be there, but in a higher way. So first the higher and from there the lower should change. This is the process. It comes moreover from separation, division, to make a thing always either this or that. If you choose this, you turn your back on that. If you choose that, you turn your back on this. It is an impoverishment. One must know how to take up everything, combine everything, synthesize everything, and then one has an integral realization. I remember a little incident, somebody when I had just come here and I was going in the ambulance to the Arvindai hospital. I remember the detail. And uh, it was uh, the person, I was new, so you know, you feel happy listening to the story. So somebody with me was telling, you know, when I came here, I asked some big spiritual person, unnamed, <laughs> so big sadhak. So he said, uh, and genuinely, very much revered and respected. He said, I want to, I have an interest in studying history, doing MA in that, what should I do? But I am also drawn to his spiritual life. He said, what will you do after attaining MA? So you, if this has come, you leave all that. And he was very happy that he did that. So I asked him, did you realize this? He said, no, 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 now I am happy doing whatever I am doing. I said, if you would have studied, maybe you would have turned that into an instrumentation for the divine work. How do you know? This is the whole catch, either this or that. Whereas the true thing, and that's what we see in the ashram, multiple activities are represented. For what purpose? For this very reason, so that we can combine the two. The genius of the humankind combined with the genius of the spiritual type. Thank you.